Welcome to the Resilience Advantage series, brought to you by the U.S. Resiliency Council and Optimum Seismic. I'm your host, Evan Reese. In this series, we're exploring what resilience means to the long-term sustainability of our communities in the face of natural disasters like earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, wildfires, and now even pandemics. In this episode, we'll be focusing on building performance rating systems, how they empower better decision-making and drive higher functionality in buildings, resulting in more resilient communities. To begin, let's consider what we mean by building performance rating systems. I asked the U.S. Resiliency Council's policy expert, Cheryl Rabinovich, how rating systems help consumers make better decisions, especially to manage risk. So we're all familiar with a lot of different rating systems in our lives, from the service industry, restaurants, hotels, um, energy efficiency, and many more. Uh, at heart, what a rating system is about is choosing what we want uh, and how much we want to spend relative to what we're going to get. It empowers us to do that. Uh, one of the best examples is the car safety test rating system for shopping for automobiles. What that rating system does is allow us to comparison shop between the trade of safety and all the other things we might want when we're buying a car. So a rating system helps us assess trade-offs. This is a helpful analogy because safety is not the only criteria we care about when buying a car. Clear and credible consistent information helps people make better decisions and weigh the trade-offs. So taking it up a level from individual decisions, how do ratings translate into more efficient markets, grounded in facts and not assumptions? Public policy research shows that rating systems, they can powerfully influence market behavior, not just by giving people more and better information when they make decisions, but in a way that's less coercive, you know, not necessarily passing a law and telling people what they have to do. Um, people start wanting to build, serve, produce differently because they know they're gonna be rewarded for offering that better product because the fact that it's a better product is easily visible to the consumer. There are a number of building rating systems out there that focus particularly on green and environmental design and performance. But green design alone is not enough to fully understand sustainability. That's exactly right. Uh, a certain performance rating for sustainability does not assure that a building is going to do well, stay functional, uh, or even be repairable after a flood, hurricane, fire, earthquake. So a disaster like that could wipe out decades of sustainability gains that we've made in terms of new construction. And that's not even factoring in the 80 or 90 percent of buildings that are existing uh, and that are not as resilient to hazards. I was immediately interested in the idea of ratings for earthquake performance for buildings because ratings have worked so well in so many other domains. And it's really appealing just to give people information they didn't have access to before so they can make better informed decisions for themselves. Indeed, it's a misconception to think that codes or laws are going to assure buildings will remain functional after a disaster. The U.S. Resiliency Council was founded with the mission to clarify these misconceptions, but also to show stakeholders that the kind of performance they may want from their buildings is in fact achievable, and often quite affordable with good ROI. So advanced rating systems like the USRCs also quantify performance in multiple dimensions. Importantly, building codes deliver a minimum threshold of safety, but USRC measures safety and damage and recovery time, each on a five-star scale. So this allows any party to a transaction to objectively calculate a return on investment in resilience in the same way that a business owner might calculate the benefits of investing in new equipment or a new business opportunity. So that's critical. Sophisticated building owners in cities are now seeing the value and starting to reap the rewards of investing in both sustainability and resilience. 
Michelle Jones is a senior principal at RIM Architects in San Francisco and was part of the team that designed the USRC Gold LEED Certified Office Building at 85 Bluxom Street in the city. Um, I, I think that the type of tenant that is uh, interested in leasing space in buildings in San Francisco are very savvy. They're looking for LEED certified buildings. Well um, certified is another program for creating wellness in interior spaces. And then the USRC, our developer owner was absolutely ecstatic to be able to, to add that to the mix. And so now he has an asset which he intends to hold for, for years and years that is very easy, easily marketable. And, um, and in comparison to other, other assets or other projects that, that tenants can lease, this project is gonna stand out as compared to others. One of the USRC's partners is FLASH, the Federal Alliance for Safe Homes, led by CEO Leslie Chapman Henderson. I interviewed Leslie about her work around resilience to storms, primarily in the South and Eastern U.S. Leslie is acutely aware that for many owners, the fear of disasters alone is not enough to spur action. I asked Leslie how she thinks building rating systems fit with Flash's approach to emphasizing public education. We know it's not a good idea, because it doesn't work, to try to scare people into good decision making. Just our human nature is such that we're gonna check out, we're gonna just tune out, and we're gonna walk away from anything that's just too scary, especially if it's a low probability event. So our formula, and it's been this way for many, many years, is to instead empower them with achievable actions, affordable decisions, and information that they can then turn into good decisions. Leslie, how do you think that building resilience rating systems fit with Flash's approach to emphasizing public education? I think that rating and helping people understand the potential performance of their building that they're either renting or buying, living in, working in, and, and giving that, that way, that, that calculus to figure out the potentials there is fundamentally the only thing that is ever gonna help society get engaged on building performance. In America, we rate everything. You know, everything we do in this country is about a scorecard because it's the easiest way to transfer an understanding up and down of how things are gonna go. And so I think rating buildings and what the U.S. Resiliency Council is doing to give that tool to the public, whether it's renters or owners, is essential. What we need on the building side and don't have yet is transparency in the marketplace, but we also need it to be forward-looking for the future so that the renter comes asking for the resilient building. Market transformation is the underlying goal of rating systems, achieved by empowering people to make better informed decisions for themselves. The landlord and the marketplace will respond because if there are choices between a resilient place to rent and one that's dangerous, the, the logical place is that they're gonna choose the more resilient. We just need to help them understand that this is a new social norm and it's a fair expectation that you should live somewhere safe. IBHS, the Insurance Institute for Building and Home Safety, has developed a wind hazard rating system for single family homes and commercial buildings. Fortified ratings give building owners specific criteria to evaluate and improve the resilience of their properties. And IBHS has been successful in working with states along the southeastern coast to achieve insurance discounts for fortified rated buildings. Building rating systems create a virtuous cycle where the more the public becomes aware of distinctions between buildings, the more demand is generated among owners to become leaders themselves. When I first got involved in this industry 20 years ago, uh, green building was something that was just emerging. But for the most of these developers, they're out once the deal is done and the building is finished. So it took really requiring this stuff, making it mandated for people to start saying, oh, okay, I need to be doing this. And then also that combined with tenant demand. You weren't gonna get a major tech tenant to lease out 10 floors in your building unless it was lead rated. If you're a building owner, you want a building that's gonna last. And you want a building that's gonna be safe for people, enjoyable for people, and that's good business at the end of the day. 
Building resilience rating systems have the potential to supplement or even replace current industry financing practices that are often imprecise, outdated, or sometimes even gamed because parties to the market transaction aren't incentivized to fully acknowledge existing risks. One might think that financial institutions are already very good at measuring the risks of their portfolios, but not really so for building risks due to natural disasters. That's evident trying to manage climate change right now. Um, there aren't always consistent methods available to do that, but in the financial world, there's a lot of pressure to make sure those transactions go through. And engineers are not immune. They're often in a position to interpret the data in a way that will help the deal proceed. Um, but what happens then when the buyer sells or bundles their assets together? Um, after an earthquake, we could be in a situation which is similar to the 2008 financial crisis, uh, where people misunderstood the risks of a bundle of assets and it came back to haunt us all. As part of the Resilience Advantage series, we've interviewed several business associations and chambers of commerce leaders in Southern California, like Tracy Hernandez of the Los Angeles Area Business Federation, or BizFed, and Laurel Rosen and Colin Diaz of the Santa Monica and Culver City Chambers. They see resilience as the next natural extension of the commitments that businesses have made and opportunities they've reaped from sustainability. Over time, people start seeing the benefit of it. It sets a standard, I think, that is really good. When, people, when there's a standard, then people know what to expect. Having a standard on that gives people uh, something to use in marketing. I mean, really, that's business 101, right? You're always, you have something that's a great idea or good or service, and then without marketing, you don't have anything. So it should give people an edge, I would think. The timing is so important because um, in a sense, it's, it's almost like the effects of an earthquake. You know, the communities are shaken to their core. Things aren't the way they are seen. There's a little bit of uncertainty. And in the midst of all that uncertainty is oftentimes the best time to do different things, to, to think outside of the box, to look at different partnerships, to reprioritize what's important. There's a saying, no better, do better. And clearly the research is out there. The statistics are out there that support why you should make some of these changes and why you should uh, be proactive. Financial institutions and insurance companies are considering how they can use the standardization and technical credibility of building resilience ratings to reward better performing buildings with lower borrowing costs or insurance discounts, just like a discount you can get on your home policy for having a burglar alarm system. Sorrel Hansen with FM Global, a worldwide insurer, believes in the potential of ratings, not just to reduce a company's risk, but also in the amount of insurance they may need to carry. Well, a rating system like the USRC uh, building ratings can really help a building owner or even a larger uh, company with many buildings um, understand what that uh, risk is, understand how resilient their buildings are, and start to prioritize where they would make improvements um, or how they want to transfer that risk um, or a combination of both. Building resilience rating systems can also be used by donors and community-focused nonprofits to better pursue their existing goals. Camilla Seth is an expert in sustainability and finance. She sees potential in ratings to help philanthropists target their giving and better measure what those investments are able to achieve. The notion of focusing intentionally on building resilience is relatively new for philanthropy. And it has not been thought about as explicitly as it needs to be. There's a lot of focus post-disaster about how you run a lot of different programs, how you ensure business continuity and so forth. Um, but I don't know that people have focused sufficiently in the philanthropic and community development sector, for example, in the role of buildings and in what needs to be thought about in advance uh, about ensuring bu building resilience. So their headline strategy may not be disaster resilience, but disaster resilience is something you need to ensure and to address in order to achieve these other goals. Why? 
because we're facing disaster after disaster after disaster. So we should also be increasing the attention and the funding that we bring to assuring that buildings are resilient. Lori Schumann of Enterprise Community Partners is an advocate for using resilience ratings to help improve how housing and economic development programs target their investments. The issue around building owners, and I've worked with hundreds of building owners around the country at this point on this topic, they have very limited reserve, very limited resources, growing more limited by the day. They have pressures enormous pressures on them to support a variety of resident needs uh, as well as deal with an enormous amount of compliance from the federal agencies, state and local agencies that regulate them. A uh, rating system will help us start the conversation about how to quantify their risk and quantify their improvements. We are desperate for a uh, way to quantify the return on investment for this work in a community for example, if you have a benchmarking based on a rating system, the city can then use that information to go into FEMA and say, we'd like to apply for hazard mitigation grants. And here's why we know that there's a need for performance. Here are the gaps. Here's the rating and the scores of the buildings that we need to prioritize. So the rating system will not only help the owners, it'll help the regulators and the program directors and the housing departments figure out where their greatest vulnerability is as they seek investment. Throughout the Resilience Advantage series, we've featured the stories of buildings and owners who are receiving the benefits of investing in improved earthquake performance and using building rating systems to measure and communicate these improvements. These cases demonstrate the wide range of building uses and structural system types, both new and existing, for which rating systems are being obtained. Casa Adelante, 91 units of 100% affordable housing for low-income seniors in San Francisco's Mission District, achieved a resilience rating for less than one quarter of 1% additional cost of construction. Casa Adelante went from an ordinary building to one where its occupants won't have to seek shelter after a repeat of the 1906 earthquake. In Portland, Oregon, the U.S. Resiliency Council awarded silver ratings to four hundred-year-plus old seismically retrofitted unreinforced masonry buildings. Critics may take the position that building a new office building or apartment would be easier. But there's both intangible beauty in history as well as economic reward, safety, and environmental benefits to be found in preserving the past and adapting it to new uses. The Roseville, California City Hall Annex was the first public building to receive a Platinum Resiliency Rating in 2016. Several other public buildings have been rated since, including the new base-isolated Oregon Treasury Building and the state of California's Clifford Allenby Building, which will help California state offices stay operational in the face of an earthquake. USRC has certified commercial, residential, hotel, office, big box retail, and high-tech laboratories for their expected resilience performance, with owners that include state agencies, universities, developers, and nonprofits. When it comes to making our new and our older buildings safer and more resilient to earthquakes and other natural hazards, there is always a struggle to justify spending money now to reduce the impacts of disasters sometime in the future. Whether a small owner of an apartment building, a large high-tech corporation in Silicon Valley, a university or a town, today's needs often weigh against tomorrow's risks. Building rating systems provide owners tenants, and financial markets with objective, credible, and measurable metrics about the social and financial value of resilient design. Rating systems allow building stakeholders to communicate with a common language that is easy to understand but is built on state-of-the-art science and engineering. In our next episode, we'll explore how public policy can and is being used to improve the resilience of communities and businesses mandatory and voluntary programs that also educate and incentivize build a culture of resilience acceptance and are succeeding in moving us toward a stronger future for us all. Please join us next time on The Resilience Advantage.